viewers today we have krishna with us but, uh, krishna for joining today thank you thank you vengesh it's good to be here so introduce yourself you like to know from yeah, your yeah sure words. sure vengesh so hi viewers i'm krishna i'm a currently a first year mba student at brock university so it's it's called the goodman school of business so i did my undergrad in mechanical engineering from nit suratkal Uh, i passed out in 19 then i worked in mahindra and mahindra so i worked as a graduate engineer trainee the starting point of any engineer and uh, i worked in engine testing performance simulations and even validation so i have both the testing experience and also the design experience so i worked in uh, mrv mahindra research valley so in chennai and i also worked in mahindra trucks and buses in pune so uh, overall the experience was amazing although the work was more but the experience was equally rewarding and i left the job in 21 so then i uh, took a, like a break for like 3 to 4 months then i joined uh, a community called ggi so global governance initiative mm-hmm. this was the first time i interacted with someone who are not engineers my friend said everyone were just engineers and this was a pro- platform where i started to meet new people i started meeting lawyers cas uh, business people then that's when i thought uh, i always had this interest to pivot into something managerial roles but i love products that's why i was into this product development in the first place and i found that in my second year of working that i'm good with decision making so i thought an mba would be a good upgrade so i shifted from an engineering thing to now an mba thing mm-hmm. so here i am right uh, can you give some introduction about this global governance initiative is it a paid job or is it a voluntary activity or how do how do we want to get into such a um, uh, platform so it's it's not a job or something it's just a community where it's organized by two people naman and sashatakshi so these two people wanted to create something new called an alt mba now this trend is booming so they it was the cost program cost was 20000 rupees mm-hmm. that's it. so they either have like a 3 month course or a 6 month course mm-hmm. where they give uh, master classes so let's say product management so they bring speakers uh, i think we got uh, airtel vice president and then some startup founder so we they teach product management from their perspective like what are we looking into product management how do we go about solving and then we solve cases and the best part is that we are solving cases with random people so they put us in the breakout rooms mm-hmm. and we have to socialize solve the case produce result mm-hmm. so it's not evaluated or something it's all about us showing interest and working with people so mba but Uh, in a short period of time to give an ex- exposure and experience both right so so i really you know uh, those three months i have met so many people and i also found out that so many people could shift their careers because of this because they made new people so they get those new connections mm-hmm. so okay. mm-hmm. yeah so that's how and for me it was more about i was uh, you yeah, know i wasn't working at any ways mm-hmm. so i was applying for colleges so i thought this would be a good uh, mm-hmm. you know good amount of time spent right. in this program. so is this like a meet up uh, sessions during weekends or during weekdays or how many hours one need to spend for in a week uh, for this global governance uh, for global governance it's mostly on weekends okay. because that's when everyone used to be free right. and uh, the whole uh, it, the classes were long 3 okay. to 4 hours at a stretch uh-huh. because the speakers used to come all that okay. but very engaging and they used to give some homework uh-huh. ah yeah okay. so it's up to us whether we want to do or not okay. but we used to do it because it was fun okay. and yeah finally after the whole covid thing 90% of the people were working from home right right so, 
all of them wanted that whole right. interaction to get going right, and they right. all met up in real life also right right yes yeah, it was morely mostly the weekend part okay all right right so when you decided to pursue uh, mba uh, what made you to choose uh, brock university and what were your other choices and how was your uh, that the filtering process happened mm. how did that happen can you so i think it's very subjective that uh, everyone is looking for something uh, you know unique like uh, i was looking for lifestyle i was looking for uh, budget budget yeah it's it's the main thing and i was looking at the rankings as well mm-hmm. and i was also looking that in case if i want to work for a while ontario sounded the best to me because quebec had all those regulations right. that uh, the french thing all that so i looked something for ontario first then i looked at the rankings then i looked at the budget then i did look at the lifestyle i wanted something calmer and then all of them tick to brock but i did apply for ryerson i did apply for mcmaster i applied uh, queens as well then uh, I applied for Nova Scotia. There is a Sobe School of Business, mm, yeah, yeah. and also Vancouver uh, BD School of Business. Yeah, 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 yeah. Simon Fraser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. then uh, I even applied two colleges in uh, UK, okay. uh, Warwick okay. and Cranfield. Uh-huh. So I applied for MIM course there because MBA is way too expensive in UK. Okay. And okay. they all required uh, three years of work ex. Mm-hmm. So I had two years of work ex. Mm-hmm. so can- canadian universities uh, they require 2 years of work ex most of them right so so since you mentioned budget was one of the main criteria i assume uh, you did not uh, specifically look into us based universities As yes the yes. cost will be a no. lot little higher than canadian universities right okay they they are way too expensive i think the right. ones if we see like an equivalent university it would be around 1 crore 70 lakhs or more than that so mm. that was out of my budget right right so how, I, what what is the cost for brock university's mba program uh, for this two year program how much uh, one has to uh, spend at this moment in time uh it was around uh, 42 lakhs 45 lakhs mm-hmm. depends uh some people i mean the actual fee is around 40 to 45 okay, right. okay. Uh, some people actually applied early mm-hmm. so they got this uh, around like uh, $6000 or like $10000 scholarship oh, okay. i applied way late i applied into oh. round 4 okay. so i had to pay the full fees <laughs> right so what is this uh, applying earlier means what is that ideal time that you are an early uh, player what so time? usually application start by november uh-huh. or december depending on the college so i always advise apply by the first round that's round 1 mm. so that's when most of the scholarships most of the other aids financial aids are available and uh, i i think each round will be like one month mm. so december jan feb march i applied in march mm. So I that was my like my round four or something. Right, and the college starts by September, right? It starts by September. Right. So, um, uh, so those who, uh, what was the? Is there any admission criteria? Can you please go uh, tell us about the admission criteria? Uh, it will be mostly there are two streams of MBA here, the one with work ex and one without work ex. I think this is one of the only universities where they give MBA without work ex. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. I I kind of first wrote down a mail to them asking uh, am I eligible they have this pre assessment check mm-hmm. so I send them my score send them my profile then they said you are eligible for both mm-hmm. it depends on how you go about it mm-hmm. so I went with the one with the work ex mm-hmm. and uh, for that we need IELTS we need a uh, GRE or GMAT mm-hmm. and then yeah the CV and uh, 3 LORs and an sop mm. so this is basically like a, and the sop was also mostly like a situational based like uh, describe a situation where you contributed and it was more like an interview so we had to type it down mm. apart from the regular sop mm. so 
yeah i and i have other people in this other stream where they came without writing any gre or gmat mm-hmm. oh the other stream where without experience there no gmat was ex- expected yeah, yeah. and there are uh, there are people with like 7 or 8 years of experience in the other stream <laughs> They just didn't wanna write GMAT because they were already working, so right. they didn't have the time to write prepare for this. Oh, okay. So it's kind of beneficial to them. Uh, so so people were in the stream of uh, non-experienced category with experience, just because yeah. they don't want to write GMAT, they came, GMAT. but they want to pursue MBA in an in, uh, international university. So they chose the one stream without experience. but they actually had experience experience oh. yeah even the chinese people right right uh, they are like 10 to 15 years of work ex right. they are all in that stream right right so people who didn't have time uh, to give gmat or gre they only gave ielts they got that english score and then they applied here and then they uh, they, got they got into the university that's great so with regards to the scholarship when was it awarded during the offer letter uh, time itself for those who applied in the first round Yeah, yeah, it was nice. awarded in the offer letter. Like right away, they say that uh-huh. this is the financial aid we can provide you. Okay, okay, that's great. So, oh. uh, how was this visa process? Uh, once we got the admit letter, I and mean, when we were applying visa, uh, should you need to? Uh, was there any deposit money that you need to? Uh, first, first, was there any deposit money you need to uh, submit to the university for admissions? Uh, first, basic uh, fee, I think, around uh, three to four thousand. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you are asking that, yeah, there there is that uh, admit fee. Right. Yeah. yeah. So Once we get the universities will ask to submit some money uh, to confirm the admission um, within one month mm-hmm. or something, right? So I am asking about that money. Okay, that yeah, deposit yeah. I was asked about like five hundred dollars, so okay. that's thirty thousand. Okay. The other stream is costly. It is three thousand dollars. Ah. For one yeah. with the uh, experience, it's just twenty five hundred dollars, which is equivalent to yes. thirty thousand Indian rupees. Other is like three thousand dollars, which is equivalent of like one hundred of lakhs or one hundred one hundred of lakhs, right? Okay. And usually, this five hundred or three thousand dollars is it part of the tuition fees that we are supposed to pay, or is it a separate apart from the forty uh, the forty lakhs that you mentioned? Mm-hmm. Is this Thirty thousand deposit fees. Is it included inclusive of that, or will they reduce it from their fees? Yes, yes, it is included. Okay. So you have to minus it out and right. then pay so, the rest. So the next time when you pay your first semester fees, you reduce this five hundred dollars and you pay the rest of whatever yes. left for. All right, that's great. Yeah. So what were the? How was the visa approval process? As you got the admit, was it very smooth, or were there any? Uh, from your friend circle, were there any experience where they had to go through rejections and then reapply, anything of that sort? Yeah, I think the this last year it, there was a huge drama with the visa thing. Uh-huh. There were so many delays. I think three to four months of uh-huh. delays. Uh-huh. So uh, I think uh, I think this is how it works in India. You have a consultant who helps you through the admission, and the same consultant also helps you through the visa. Okay. so the consultant already has the required documents mm-hmm. takes up and then applies for the visa as well mm-hmm. so usually i think they go by sds okay mm-hmm. for me the thing was uh, i didn't go through a consultant i applied all these colleges by myself all right so i didn't know where to start mm-hmm. and uh, importantly my bank loan got delayed mm-hmm. so i was thinking of sds because that's the uh, fastest way of getting it non sds takes months mm-hmm. and uh, by the time i got my visa uh, i got my loan it was june mm-hmm. so i applied in june mm-hmm. in non sds mm-hmm. because that's the only thing i took a gamble mm-hmm. and i got my visa in 2 days okay <laughs> that's <laughs> great okay right nice yeah. yeah so rest of the people we we had a whatsapp group okay. all the new admits right Everyone were like panicking. Even I, I didn't know what to do. So, right. but I took that gamble, right. and uh, I applied, and I got it in two days. Right. So it was smooth for me. And right. uh, I was in, I, I'm in Bangalore only. So right. okay. I went, got it uh, stamped, and right. all it was right. easy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, for the rest of the people, 
it was way late and brock actually mm. accommodated these people they said you can come to college within 3 weeks mm. after the start mm. until then you can attend classes through online yeah yeah you can attend through online just like if you can get it in 3 weeks just come in 3 weeks they actually made that provision i think they didn't make it the before year but this year they actually did it but were there students who couldn't make it even in the 3 weeks and uh, what was what yeah yeah there were some people like that so okay. i have like two to three friends so they took the whole sem online ah okay so now they came for the jan and tech so uh, they they still did their sem 1 online oh, and okay. sem 2 they're doing offline that's good that's good that's good so just waited and uh, got their uh, admissions right yes. um but um for so can you please tell us about this um, sds uh, something that you are mentioning just yeah i think on. sds is the student direct stream okay. so they just wanted to divert the traffic of uh, mm-hmm. students applying and also the other people applying so they created a different stream so they which was only for students who are applying to these universities mm-hmm. and colleges so uh, it is supposed to get it in 20 days within 20 days right now the sds is working in 5 days mm-hmm. <laughs> so Things that particular, yeah that happen. particular time because of the war right. there was so much backlog mm-hmm. but i think I, we, i have some bangladeshi friends they had to wait 6 months wow yeah yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. So, but uh, just uh, just for the viewers' uh, sake, um, if you yes, like um, Krishna told, you can always apply by yourself. Uh, but uh, do your thorough research. Even if you are applying through uh, some agents, please do your thorough research because agents are not uh, the subject matter expertise in terms of uh, the course that you are getting into. Uh, and uh, it is not their life in stake it is your life in stake so please make sure that the right university is being applied for the right uh, school and the right particular close just like krishna told there are two streams one with experience and the one without experience so make sure that you are being applied to the right particular uh, courses whatever um, uh being applied based on the universities and do your thorough research by asking any doubts to the directly to the admissions team and get it clarified and uh, what was the early time like do your thorough research even in terms if you are going through agents just make sure that they are there to guide you in terms of the documents needed uh, for the applying visa but not to blindly depend on them and uh, there are many uh, agents who may even uh, be a scam so please be aware that you have done your thorough research yeah <laughs> and yeah, yeah yeah just to add upon this uh, i took an agent help for visa right because i didn't know the whole process there were so many forms to fill right right but i wrote my own sop because right. if we give her this thing they'll just have a generic format and there was actually many rejections happening at that right. point of time mm. they weren't convinced that you're coming back to india right right so write your own story i would say to any viewer that like, write your own story because you know yourself better than right. anyone else yeah 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 you know please be honest as much as you can or something that i have seen over the years is the honesty is something that well regarded and uh, also rewarded uh, in canadian um, government bodies so please be honest even to universities uh, do your uh, your assignments uh, quizzes everywhere just please be honest no shortcuts no bypass just go to the straight way be honest and things will work out people will recognize the honesty as long as you are in that particular criteria um, going through like those criteria are properly met no one is going to stop you yeah yeah I completely agree <laughs> right right that's great um, uh, krishna so now getting into the course structure um, so can you please uh, tell us about this course is it like a strict two year course or can one complete even in a shorter time than two years uh, as far as i know it's a strict two year course okay and that to again now since we have two different streams mm-hmm. so the one which i am doing the experience stream it is like two semesters it's like uh, august to december and jan to april mm-hmm. then we have a four month break mm-hmm. so that's when they ask us to do the work co-op mm-hmm. work term then again back to august to december and uh, next year april mm-hmm. so it's like a two year course with four months of gap great okay. so for the other stream it is 16 months straight 
so all four semesters happen like back to back even in the summer it happens so they pass out by december without co-op so without co-op okay. then they have to do their co-op but before graduation yeah before graduation okay so they so study december. everything and then do co-op and then graduate okay. graduate okay all right all right so how uh, difficult or easy it is to get co-op Uh, can you speak about that experience uh currently i am also finding for one <laughs> but uh, right now the job market is not good okay. because of the recession they are not looking many postings are getting deleted mm-hmm. but there is a career board mm-hmm. uh, which the team supports from the inside right. so they look at your resume they look at your cover letter and for each job we can actually approach like for each job we can go there ask them so they'll say maybe write it like this maybe add it more and their editing skills are far better mm-hmm. <laughs> like what we have right, right. so they actually support us and they actually uh, follow back to the employer right, like right. Uh, yeah, yeah yeah so situation is not that good right now mm-hmm. but there are still openings mm-hmm. and uh, one thing one question i always had was how do i convince them that i want to be a manager instead of an engineer mm. because we are engineers by general so they don't even look at the technical suppose if i'm applying to an financial role they will only see my willingness to learn and my curiosity they don't see whether i studied cfa or i did some financial work even i have seen people zero work ex related to that particular subject mm-hmm. they just see whether the candidate is interested and honest yeah like you said mm-hmm. here they see whether integrity we can't like make up things on resume and not show up things mm-hmm. that i'm good in power bi but mm-hmm. when i actually go there i'm like i just did it for the job so they appreciate the honesty but if they are willing to learn they will give us the job so uh, tell me uh, tell us about the kind of um, accommodation facilities available uh, is it um, the on campus accommodation is what being preferred or uh, how is it uh, managed so there is on campus facilities there are so many different types like uh, there are shared rooms single rooms and also there are some suite rooms Uh, but they are expensive at least to indians i feel they are expensive right, yeah. so everyone stays out okay right so right. Uh, even i am staying outside right. like yeah. and uh, st catherine's is a very small town it's like a student town mm-hmm. so the only people roaming around is students mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah the locals are there but the population is less right and the transit is good surprisingly mm-hmm. i keep le- seeing memes about north american transit that uh, it's the worst thing possible but for us we have buses every 15 minutes right. and sometimes in the rush hour we have buses every 5 minutes yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's free uh, right. by the way so we have that id card so right. we scan it right. and it's free yeah 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 it is free so yes. i think once we have that free transit and uh, college right from downtown is yeah. 15 minutes nice, so nice. that's not a lot nice, compared nice. Yeah. compared to indian traffic so i think so, we are used to it right something that i have also noticed um, uh, in toronto as well is that um, uh, usually if you stay in the in one of those near to the campus uh, areas where uh, the bus routes are there during those college hours since because more students has to reach the campus yes. and uh, on the evening as well more students have to go out of the campus the buses will be very frequent sometimes like every 5 minutes or 2 minutes even right so yeah okay. so, as but only to those routes where uh, that leads to the college so if your house is in those routes then you are lucky if not then you have to do the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right that's yeah. the here also some some areas are there even we make jokes of uh, like one hour frequency right. there's a bus at one hour frequency the rents are cheaper but mm-hmm. it's the uh, cost yeah, yeah. how much <laughs> does the rent uh, an average student pays when he is staying outside the campus mm-hmm. anywhere between 500 to 700 i would say okay. like 500 to 800 so i am paying 700 because i am in a single room right. and i'm in a 
apartment sort of thing so it's a student living okay. so half of the things are taken care by the management staff all right so some people are sharing rooms they're staying in this individual houses mm-hmm. so there i think they're paying around uh, 500 or like 400 right if you want to stay alone then anywhere from 700 800 right and on top of that groceries may come around another 250 dollars at least 250 yeah right uh, so maybe a thousand dollars is considered a monthly expense uh, for sure right? yeah i would say that yeah. Yeah, yeah since we are not paying anything for transit right so only yeah groceries all that so thousand right so so what, uh, coming back to this co-op opportunities where all those co-op opportunities Uh, mostly focused on toronto or um, where do you see the employers coming from mostly toronto uh-huh. very few from st catharines uh-huh. and toronto yeah mostly like mississauga brampton north york anywhere yeah anywhere mostly toronto and very rarely maybe from montreal ottawa mm-hmm. and vancouver very rarely but yeah most of them want ontario students right. so yeah right. So um in terms of the part time jobs is this course the from the course load perspective does we does it allow students to take part time or is it too heavy that students find it struggling to manage part time with the course how how is the course load yeah i think it's a very subjective answer for me no <laughs> uh, i wanted to take all offline classes because i have this indian thing that if i'm paying this much i don't want yeah. to sit and listen at yeah. home yeah. so i do take everything online uh, offline and uh, for me first sem was too hectic uh-huh. right i couldn't get a time i wanted to work but i couldn't get time and even now second sem is like that right. but some people have managed to do it and they are actually balancing both mm. and some people took some courses online so that they can do two classes one class is 3 hours for us oh wow so they can do like 6 hours in one day so that the other day is free mm. so they are doing it but uh, yeah it's it depends on the individual i would say right right so from the courses perspective was there any particular course uh, that usually students find it difficult and uh, is it for new uh, applicants like is it they can do some homework back before joining is it is there any such course where they if you find it difficult or your friends everyone find it very difficult and uh, yes yes uh, it, it 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 again depends on the background so for engineers they would find accounting difficult right uh-huh. because everything is new we don't know what's notes what's accounts payable all yeah. that so first time i'm listening to assets and liability yeah, yeah, yeah. so Uh, i think there are so many uh, courses on edx and all i wish i knew that but now i know it so it's better if they just do that crash course on basic uh, principles of accounting and for the accounting people and the other people quants courses are difficult the statistics oh, right. so regression they are hearing that for the first time so but engineers know it very well right. before only so yeah it depends on their backgrounds there's struggling in the other subjects right 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 so i would say uh, i think there are so many crash courses sort of thing right. where they say that pre mba it uh-huh. it's titled as pre mba okay so they give an overall introduction about these courses uh-huh. so if someone does that then that i think that will be good right 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 so uh, this since this is a two year program is the uh, post graduation work permit is given for 3 years yeah it's given for 3 years right So usually um, from the seniors or what kind of uh, roles do they get into after graduation mm, if we are talking about consultancies they'll actually get into the senior consultant roles uh-huh. and uh, data analysts business analysts uh, IT project specialists uh-huh. and even like if we take HR you get into the policy making side of it not like a recruiter but you will get into the one who creates those policies mm-hmm. so actually a pretty good roles have been seeing mm-hmm. and uh, people actually end up with 3 to 4 job offers in their hand mm-hmm. oh, okay. so yeah i mean that's a good start right, right. like of course <laughs> great, great, great. um 
that's really that's really uh, awesome to uh, hear so uh, can you also can you speak about the weather um, in your city st catherine's you you oh, yeah <laughs> i don't like it i mean <laughs> i'm from bangalore where everything is so stable right. <laughs> and uh, yeah it's bad like the summers are good i mean i came in august so i saw the last bit of it mm. it was beautiful and even till december it was good but uh, from december it's just been bad <laughs> yeah, it's way too cold minus 25 minus 30 minus 30 yeah. because this place is like uh, elevated and there are two lakes on each side Ontario and the other lake, mm-hmm. so it becomes too windy. Yeah, the windy city, very windy city. So and it's Niagara always... Falls. How how far is Niagara Falls? Ah, uh, by car it's ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. Great, great, great. That's our go-to place. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Summer will be awesome, I guess, right? Yeah, it was. It was. That is the most beautiful moment till now. Uh, there's that boat which goes to that yeah, yeah. Uh, Niagara, Niagara thing. Yeah. So it. made of the mist so yeah, yeah. it's beautiful yeah we go to niagara very often right. because uh, it's a 40 minutes bus ride uh-huh. yeah so by bus it's longer because it stops and takes right. a longer route but by car we used to come back in uh, uber or something right. in the night 10 yeah. minutes right right, right. great <laughs> can you also speak about the university life rock university life it's very very nice i mean very different for an indian student because there is so much emphasis on the athletics mm-hmm. the extra curriculars there is some even an event happening and every event is different so there will be like uh, women empowerment mm-hmm. women in stem and uh, mental health so some things some i think mental health and all these are not very much spoken in back in india mm. so all these things are very good here mm. and uh, even the winter there are some winter games mm. winter events i i recently did ice skating oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah i fell like 10 times but it was worth it <laughs> but uh, yeah the life is very good and uh, as a student perspective you get to meet new cultures mm. like these whites here or the chinese here and we have something new to learn from them like at least i see that uh, chinese are very hard working so you get that trait and the canadians here are looking into a lifestyle where they don't take things that seriously and they're not like uh, you know we have that academically driven like right. compares and all that right. so they don't compare it so once they're done with the class mm. they have something else to do mm. so they have they want to play tennis they want to focus on that mm. so for us it's most like we'll finish the academics then we'll see if we get a time or something mm. and and mba is mostly group work mm. so when you end up in a group of a, one chinese one canadian and all so you get a new perspective how to solve problems yeah. Yeah, sometimes so, I do get the feeling like sometimes when we see some uh, senior uh, management guy at work, uh, and we used to speak about share the experience at work, mm-hmm. and so they used to say like I was traveling that to that country during this many for this many years. I was working in that country as a as a volunteer, as a teacher, teaching English for this many years, and. and here is where he is like he will be the executive yeah. or someone like he he is not simply a like, guy who finished his 12th standard got into college college after uh, work and then or he is someone who has also gone out and tried different It's things true. and then now he is somewhere that like, those kind of experiences i have even seen Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I think I resonate to that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even I felt that yeah. that's a new new perspective, yeah, new perspective. coming from yeah. India. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have this uh, question: since the cost of this education is degree is close to like forty to forty five lakhs, you told. Um, I'm just curious to know: do Indian banks provide loans covering that big amount, or how do students manage that big amount? Mm, actually. if we have a collateral like a property to put as like a mortgage then we get loans up to 70 lakhs as well okay so hdfc i'm talking about hdfc i think even sbi provides that much 
and if we need like non collateral they'll push till 25 or 30 and they also check the country so if for us they give non collateral up to 40 mm-hmm. yeah but like canada they are still at 25 30 already right. yeah so if we have a collateral to put then yeah it doubles so 70 mm-hmm. 75 they can push so i went to the hdfc credilla right. and i took a non collateral mm-hmm. all right so i got like a 30 approved mm. and others we had a gold loan we had a personal loan as well mm. so right. yeah all this nice. right right yeah yeah and uh, as a final question i would like to um, uh, ask from you or experience is there something specific that you would like to share with the viewers mm, yeah so i took a break when i was working because i was overloaded with work in chennai mm-hmm. so the work i used to do was around 15 to 17 hours per day mm-hmm. and that really took a toll on me mm-hmm. <laughs> i stopped actually you know functioning properly so i had no social life mm-hmm. just work the work was very good but like mm-hmm. i think everyone reaches a threshold so i think we should know where our limit is mm-hmm. and always remember to take those little breaks mm-hmm. so i pushed myself so hard that uh, in that hustle hustle culture mm-hmm. that uh, i ended up uh, getting sick mm-hmm. like physically sick so i think we all should know when to stop properly mm-hmm. and uh, put some emphasis on mental health mm-hmm. at least i'm very much because it's not very much spoken in india at least i feel the places where i grew up mm-hmm. and here one of the reasons why i was pulled to brock was brock is one of the leading universities emphasizing on mental health okay. and it's not a bogus thing when i came here they legit say that like uh, how is your health do you want a counseling mm-hmm. i know some friends who are taking counseling here mm-hmm. and it's very very uh, you know it's not stereotyped or something it's actually they want you to get better so and they, whenever we are stressed we can there's like a helpline we can take an appointment i mean not like a longer appointment like right away maybe next day or something they sit down they speak and they give you therapy <laughs> yeah so yeah this is something which everyone needs i feel and uh, one, since i'm gone through that i want to talk about it so i want to tell people that it's okay mm-hmm. <laughs> you'll burn out right. but before burning out just remember to take break and even if you burn out maybe get some help right you see uh, in india when we work sometimes the employer or friend circle itself so when we are actually when we are new to the career people try to um, make mm-hmm. um, make use of you by making you to work for long hours and um, sometimes even when people want to go for higher studies i have seen people thinking twice because they fear that if they do take a break uh, there will the people when they apply for universities the universities might not offer them a letter because there is a gap in their uh, yeah, career it's a gap. they will not be a preferred student but from what you say it it uh, coming out of that stereotype universities do see the credibility of the student even in case if they are taking a break uh, not too long but there is a in a considerable mm-hmm. break and and of course the kind of um, programs that you also mentioned that the global um, that the initiative uh, governance program where it's also adds up your adds up to your profile when you especially apply for the programs like mba where uh, you you know you can definitely i assume that they will look into those kind of programs that you have participated right that's, yes that's great yeah yeah I mean, so not to be fearful if you really need the break take it is something that you take know. it yeah and one more thing to indians especially whoever is coming don't stick to indians okay right i mean you are coming here you have an opportunity to talk right. to new people make new friends right. so i have seen like half of them they just stick to indian so what's the point of coming here right. so when you talk to new people you get so many different perspectives right. i think that is something like the non financial part of 
your <laughs> student uh, whatever your fee paying so i think that's very important when you talk to new people you get new perspectives right. and uh, that's something which can't which can't be beaten right, so right. those are great words uh, krishna thanks a lot for taking your time today and for viewers who haven't yet subscribed please uh, subscribe the channel stumble meet is a channel for those uh, who are planning uh, their career and uh, uh, planning for higher studies and uh, thanks a lot krishna uh, thanks a lot you have shared a lot of valuable uh, information from your experience and for the viewers not i just uh, say it the disclaimer note that not uh, two people uh, not someone's experience is an exact copy of other man's experience each one have their own uh, path and uh, um, exploration to be made so uh, taking this video the things that we discussed as a guidance please do your thorough research in terms of finding out your uh, programs of interest and um, decide many of the things which are like krishna said they are subject to matter in terms of find out what will suit for you the best and make an informed uh, decision uh, is something that um, uh, stumble me always recommends thanks a lot